today I have a super useful topic for you, creating test cards for your laser in Lightburn. I'm going to show you this simple way to find your perfect laser settings for free, ensuring that you get the best results every single day time. I will be covering engraving, cutting and kerf offset in three separate videos so I'll leave a link in the description if you would like to go and check those out. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you want to see more tips and build projects in the future. So let's dive right in. So first off what is a laser test card? So a laser test card is a tool that helps you determine the optimal power and speed settings of your laser engraver. By running a series of tests on a single piece of material, you can quickly see how the different settings affect the material of your engraving and cutting. Now, you might be wondering, why do I need to create a test card? So here's a few benefits. So first of all, it's a great learning tool. Doing a test card for beginners is a great learning tool so beginners can understand how speed and power affect the material that they're wanting to engrave or cut. I'm not a beginner, but I will do an engrave test and a cut test with every material that I intend to work with. If I am planning on building something like this, it's crucial to do a kerf test and kerf tests are essential to uh, getting the right settings for the fit of joinery. So if you're like me and you like creating something that you can build like this lantern, a kerf test is essential. So something I would like to address quite quickly is the amount of people that I see on the likes of Facebook of people basically asking for other people's settings on how they can reproduce something that somebody else has done. I just want to say that it could be wasting your time. Even if somebody has the same laser engraver as you, the same power, the same wattage, every single laser engraver is different. So doing something as simple as an engraving test card and a cut test card on the materials that other people are using, you will know your settings yourself. It could be wasting your time and money, even if it is the same laser engraver. The person that you're asking to have the settings from, you don't know whether they have focused their laser, they may have defocused their laser on purpose, they may not have cleaned their lens, they may have not cleaned their mirrors. What I'm trying to say is, is that there are multiple different factors that come into how laser engravers perform on certain materials, even down to the make and manufacture of the material that you're using compared to somebody else's. So next is accuracy. Test cards allow you to identify the best setting for the material that you're wanting to use in your project. So for me personally, I use my test cards like a storyboard. So at the workshop what i have is a load of these test cards literally fixed to the uh, wall above my computer so say for instance i need to cut or engrave a uh, pattern on this specific wood i can grab this off my wall and i can quickly see that i need 100 percent power at 100 uh, millimeters per second and i can type that into my light burn settings and i am away i will do a quick test on a scrap bit on the same project if I have space but once I know that that cuts uh, without any issues we are off to the races. So next these are time savers. I would absolutely rather spend half an hour doing a test card or two test cards and a uh, engraved test card and cut test card uh, even a kerf test rather than wasting time with a trial and error basically just plucking things out of the air because something worked on something like this so it may have the same results on this. Test cards again using the storyboard can quickly identify what setting fits the project that you need to use. These are 100mm by 100mm, 4 inch by 4 inch. It's not a lot of material to waste if you're trying to save time. This will save you more time than plucking figures out the air and hoping that something's going to work. And not only that, even if your project is a one-off for a customer, you may come back to using uh, the same material somewhere else down the line. And last but not least is consistency. With a test card, you will achieve more consistent results each time you engrave or cut. So there you have my opinion on why test cards are essential when it comes to laser engraving. Now, let me walk you through how to create these test cards in Lightburn. 
So we're now in Lightburn. Let's get to creating this engraving test card. So first of all, what we need to do is go to the menu bar at the top and click on Laser Tools. In this drop-down menu, you'll find Material Test. If you click on that, you'll get this pop-up window. So in this pop-up menu, you'll be able to see in the top left-hand corner here, we have presets. Now, if you click on this drop-down window, you'll be able to see that there's multiple presets in here. Now, if you haven't made one of these before, you will get four presets built into Lightburn. This gives you a baseline to work with. So here you can see you've got a CO2 cut test, CO2 engrave test, diode cut test, and engrave cut test. So depending on what type of laser you have, if you have a CO2 or a diode laser, you can click on one of the relevant ones. Underneath, you can see that we have user presets. These are the presets that I've already made for my own materials. So here we have a 3 mil cut test, 6 millimeter cut test, 7 millimeter oak cut test, and then my generic cut test and engrave test. So if we click on the diode engraving test, so in this menu, you'll be able to see that it's set up so that the vertical rows are separate to the horizontal columns. The count at the top here is set to 10 by 10. So that means that we've got 10, 10 squares down on the vertical and the count of 10 squares across the horizontal. You can increase or decrease the number of these. The higher number of squares that are going to be engraved or cut out will increase or decrease the amount of time that it will take to do the test card. Underneath that in the parameter you can change this to speed, power, interval or passes. So if you're using something like a 7mm oak and you're going to be using it on a 10 watt laser like I have behind, like I did with this test, I changed my speed to passes. So I can do multiple passes to see how many times it would take to cut out my squares. So for this instance what we're going to do is keep it to speed and power. So underneath that we have minimum and maximum speed. This will depend on what your machine capabilities are. So you'll be constrained to whether or not your machine can do 12,000 millimeters per minute like I've done here. This is on my OTOR Laser Master 2 Pro. It is an old machine but it still works and I like doing the tutorials with this because it's a nice budget friendly beginner machine. So here, in this instance, I can put in 12,000 millimeters per minute as my max. And then for the minimum, as you can see here, it's really, really dark. It's really charred up. I've got that down as 1500. So we can take that out and put in 1500. If you are using a laser that is a 20 watt or 30 or 40 watt, I would probably bring that max speed up to 3000 millimeters per minute just because you'll have a lot more power and you'll end up burning through the material rather than engraving it. Uh, you could potentially start at 6000 if you're then not seeing a lot of detail when it comes to uh, the different shades on your test card you can then bring that speed down. One of the reasons is we don't want to make it a hazard that you could potentially create a fire by having it at a slow speed and high power. But it also means that it will be quicker to do your first test card as your minimum speed will be four times as quick as what I'm showing you now for the lowest end. So in the speed, we can adjust this to what settings we would like to plug in. So I'm going to go for 1500 to 12,000. That literally gives me this test card. So underneath our minimax speeds we have height and under horizontal we have width. These are set at five millimeter squares. So if you want to change these so they're 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter or if you want to make them rectangular you can have them five by ten. You can do whatever size you want to uh, basically. The the larger you go, again, the more time it will take to run the test card. I like five millimeters. I don't tend to cut anything thicker than five or six mil on my diode laser, so I can get away with using smaller squares. It also means that if you're doing a project where you've got very fine, intricate cuts, if you use larger squares, then it might not represent a quality cut when you're trying to cut out something that's smaller. Because these are so close together, the heat that's generated from your laser can, um, and I don't have a test card with me, so it can start setting fire to the wood itself and burning into 
the other squares beside it. So if you're using a bigger square, the heat can dissipate from that. And if you're trying to cut something intricate, you could get discrepancies in cutting larger holes out than smaller holes when it comes to fine details in your actual job. So the Y center and the X center I will come back to in a minute. I'm just going to go through the horizontal columns. The count is the same as the vertical row, so you will have the horizontal columns. Minimum power, if you're using a diode laser, I would go down to 10%. And for me personally, I run my diode lasers at 100%, although it can degrade the laser module itself. Because it's a 10 watt laser module, I like to try and run things as quickly as possible. If I get a similar result with less power, I will drop that power down, but because I like to try and turn things out as quickly as possible, I don't mind potentially degrading my laser module to get faster results. The choice is yours. For the test card, it's not going to degrade it that much. Uh, the width uh, is exactly the same on the horizontal columns. So the X and Y centers is where it's going to engrave on your work bed. So I have a 400 by 400 work bed. Uh, the Y is at center and the X is at center, which means that on my work bed, it's going to laser engrave in the center of that. So underneath the laser controls, you can see that the output size is 82 by 92 millimeters. So it's basically 100 mil uh, square and the 100 mil square is going to be the center of the workspace. So if you look in the top right hand corner up here on the screen somewhere, there'll be the laser cam. If if I click on frame and we watch that go, you can see that it's it's basically outlining where the work material is going to be engraved. So what you can do is get a an offcut of your material or you can if you've got a large sheet and you want to move where this cuts out, you don't really want it cutting out in the center of your whole sheet. That would be really wasteful. So what we can do is move our X and Y center so we waste as little material as possible. So I'm going to put this in the top left hand corner. So for the Y center, you can see is front to back of my machine so here what i want to do is bring this up so we're looking at 100 mil so that's 100 mil to center so it's going to be 50 mil off center so i can go to 350 roughly and the x center i want to bump it across to the left hand side so as you can see here at the bottom of the screen my measurements go from the bottom left hand corner is zero to 400 so if i bring that down in measurement then it will shift it over to the left hand side and again because it's 100 by 100 i should be able to go to 50. so if you take a look at the laser in the top right hand corner of your uh, screen or it should be somewhere around there if i click on frame the laser module should head into the left hand corner of my workspace so if we have a large sheet, we'll be able to cut just that 100 by 100 out of the left hand corner rather than the center of the material. So if you want to move it somewhere else on your workspace, all you have to do is move those Y center and X center positions. Just going back to power quickly, max power. If you're using a diode laser engraver, absolutely fine. Like I said, it's a personal preference. You can degrade the laser module if you run your machines at 100% all the time. If you are using a CO2 laser, never ever run your laser at 100%. Even the test cards, I would recommend you stick to 60% maximum. Never ever run it at 100%. So if you're using a CO2 engraver, do not run this test card at 100%. You need to make sure that it's set to maximum of 60. If you can get away with using 40 to 50%, that would be even better. But you can detrimentally impact how your laser performs over a short period of time using 100% um, power as max. Uh, so with the parameters out of the way, uh, what we can do is edit the material setting. So under the edit material setting, you will see that you're basically going to have a, a bits on your test card that are going to be engraved and some of it that is going to be outlined. You just want to plug in these settings so that the labels are able to be read. For me, I'm going to leave it at 2000. Uh, if you're using a higher powered laser, more than uh, 10, 10 watts, I would probably go down to 10%. When you start the engraving, it will be the first thing that's done. So if you see that it's not marking, 
then I would just stop that test and then increase it to 20%. And again, rerun that. If it's not marking, then increase it a little bit more. Under the edit text setting, it's going to be roughly the same. So with the text setting, it's done as a line instead of an engraving. Again, it will be one of the first things that is being done. So because it's a line and because it's going to be small text, I like to run my speed uh, slower so you don't get any uh, issues with, with squiggly lines when it comes to text. So I'm going to run that at 1800 millimeters per minute uh, with a max power of 30. That's absolutely fine. Enable border setting is basically cutting out that square after you've finished engraving. So to begin with, what I would probably do is use an off cut so you don't have to guess what setting you need to cut out the test card after it's finished engraving. If you know your cut settings, then I would go into, into this and plug in your settings so you will know that. If you haven't done a cut test yet, I will leave a link in the description below on how to set that up. It's the same method, but it's for cutting material rather than an engraving. If you don't know your cut settings, I would suggest that you get an off cut or you cut a section that's big enough for the engraving test out of the material that you want to use and just run the engraving test. If you do know it, you can just plug in your speed and your power settings and that will cut your test card out. From there, what we can do is go to preview. And as you can see here, if you run this slide bar back, the text gets written first, and then it goes into the test itself. If you're not sure what these red marks are, they're basically overscan settings. So all that means is that the laser has time to pass, to then slow down, to then come back. Otherwise, you can get inconsistent lines. I have covered that in a separate video, but if you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comment section. And you can see here that it, the total time estimated is a quarter of an hour. It's 15 minutes. The, the time it takes to cut one of these out, to do the test and cut this out, will save you so much time in future projects that was probably really loud i'm sorry it will save you so much time in future projects so i will get a bit of material loaded into the machine and then we'll set this to go so we can see what the outcome is